What's up guys, Kubi Kazar here and we have a special guest, the dropshipping king, the Europe dropshipping king, Ecom Legend. Hello, what's up bro? How are you doing? Good, man, thank you. How are you bro? So um, just to keep it short, introduce yourself, who are you, um, what are you doing, how old are you, where are you from, and just these kind of things like even the reduction. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so my name is Farouk, 26 years old. I've been in the e-com space for about like four years, I'd say right now. Uh, I did over eight figures of revenue, especially in the EU markets. Um, and yeah, born and raised in the Netherlands, and now it's three years living in Dubai. Um, nice, nice. Yeah, that's like like pretty much it, I believe. All right, nice. Well, how old are you? 26. All right, nice. And how did you got like into dropshipping? Like, how was the? Did you have some friends doing dropshipping, and you got like into the business, or? What did you do earlier before starting dropshipping? And yeah. Yeah, so what happened in, uh, in my case is that I was just studying and uh, I had this one like a sales job. And while having the sales job, I was like, um, and actually I had the sales job and I knew because I had some internships before at some other like marketing mm -hmm. companies and offices. So I was sitting in this office with like three other like, like secretary and just like their normal nine to five life, I had it there. and. I knew I cannot do this forever. It will make me so depressed. So I was like, either I'm going to grind and find something uh, and I'm going to escape this kind of pain and or maybe I can, I'm going to get some money on the side, uh, but like with some business on the other mm -hmm. side. So I just did some Googling at some other guys I knew, like the neighborhood, we were doing some e-com. But uh, at first I was just like, I'm just going to make like an extra source of income, like 500 bucks a month or something. And then... I saw the potential of it and yeah, we, just, sure. we just went like all in, man. <laughs> Did you have like a purpose? Uh, like, yeah. do you want to support your family or just get out of this fucking nine to five um, red race? Yeah, so actually, bro, what it was in my case is that like, obviously the parents, uh, I was already since a young guy, always helping yeah. my family. So since That's like 15, 16 years old, what I would make, I would always give like a big presential, what I make always to my parents. So it was for me, it was something nothing special to even you know when i made all the major revenue to give some money out of it to my parents it was like normal for me so i'm quite surprised when i talk to some people and i tell them mm -hmm. yo i give like this amount of money to my you know like to my parents every month and they're like oh shit, how and why and i'm like bro like i don't know i've been it's doing this family. everything normal like bro, it's family. If, if they gave you everything how can you not give them everything yeah, for like, sure that's it's like big this okay yeah yeah, yeah man. so that was respect. one of the things and i was just deadly like depressed having a normal job man i was mm -hmm. like nah, nah, i cannot yeah. do this forever for sure and like when did you just saw like the first success of dropshipping like in the first year or did it just take some months yeah so essentially what we did is we had like uh general stores in and like eu markets mm -hmm. and actually like the first store we had was like a general store and we would sell like all kinds of things and we, we found a knee brace and we sold it. It was like like a patella like like knee brace kind of thing. And we did like 1K, 1.5K a day. And then I was getting lazy and complacent. I was like, all right, now I make maybe like four or five K profit a month I would make with it. And I was like, I was just chilling. And then my brother, he said, Farouk, why are you getting lazy right now? He said, we need to find even more products like this. Okay. And then we can escape our job. All right. I, I was like, all right. Here's yeah, the business mindset, all right. Yeah, then, then already. So, and then I was like, all right, you're right. So I went into a spy tool. I even forgot the name. It was a long time ago. I just found a product which like uh, like a contour duplicator. And I took the creative, copy-paste. I took the product page, copy-paste. And I just run it up in the in, in Netherlands. And then, bro, the first day it was like maybe two and a half, three rows, and then I changed up some stuff in the product page. I made the offer like more appealing, mm -hmm. and then I just run it up. And then I was doing like five, six k a day. I made a one product store out of that store as well. Small. And then I was doing like ten k a day in like only in the Dutch market with general mm -hmm. and in the, with the like one product store. And I was like, Yo, what the fuck's going on? You know. So and then I was like, Hey, yes, testing products all the time. It's so so important. I think you were like it. I mean, as well, like for you and like like your students, you mm -hmm. always say it like, hey, keep on testing. Keep products. testing and keep doing it fast, bro. Yeah. Because I know people, they are like since one month in the dropshipping game and they say, well, bro, I just test one product a month. What the fuck do you want to do with one product a month? Like you need Impossible. to test, you need to test more products and consistently. Like mm -hmm. that, does, uh, that means if you find a product, don't stop because many people stop. Well, no, just keep testing. Make another store, keep testing. Make another store, keep testing. 
Because sometimes the store will die and the other store is as a backup, for example. So, so like how many products a day are you testing right now? Bro, I swear they won't believe it when I say I tested 85 products in one day. Oh, bro. You can just um, check out 85 products with 15 stores. Well, I'm more into the fashion and jewelry niche. Yeah. So I test products with like pictures and videos. Maybe you saw my tweet. That's why you asked. Ah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I yeah, got yeah, a lot yeah, of hate yeah, yeah, of yeah. this tweet because they said, Master, well, yeah, no, this is cap, this is cap. No, bro. If you have systems, if you have a team, if you, if you have 15 stores and it's cool for, it's like October, November, bro. You want to print the money in these four months. You yeah. want to keep hustling in these four months. Yeah. So yeah, the biggest day which I had, I test like 85 products. And it's like in the fashion niche, jewelry niche. So I test like everything, picture ads, video ads. And yeah, man. Crazy, bro. But yeah, bro. Like and then day. I just hear some people, they test like one product a month. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. But when we talk about EU dropshipping, like which country do you mean? To which countries are you selling right now currently? Yeah. So we sell in a lot of countries. Uh, right now, which marks we're selling in, obviously, Netherlands and Belgium, mm -hmm. Germany, Sweden. Uh, no, Ger Germany, Germany, Austria, mm -hmm. Switzerland, uh, Finland, Norway, uh, Denmark, mm -hmm. um, Scandinavia. Yeah, we just sell. Like, we, we have like twelve stores, okay. something like that, right now. So and you do like for area. each store, do you do one country for each store? Exactly. You translate it completely. Exactly. Just as me. All and, right. And, and now for Q4, what we actually do is we're making for every single store, uh, for every single account, we're making an extra store, just to like you know test out some different stuff as okay. well on that store. Because we sometimes see that for some reason that a winner, uh, it when it dies out, we test it on another store and then like it lives again. So okay. what we're gonna do, we're just going to retest all of our winners in the new store again in the same countries and well, maybe scale it to even this more. This is companies. value. And by this the way, is value. by the way, this a, is value. A, a very nice market I can tell you guys about, which is outside of the EU scope and in the same way everybody in EU markets is doing like drop shipping, like fashion and mm -hmm. kind of like the, the mass testing is Australia is very intense. Australia, okay. Especially fashion. So I, I think as well like today, like you're gonna mess your team, hey, make stuff. Australia, Australia yeah. this is the gold nugget. <laughs> if someone of my team sees this, bro. It's all right, all right, funny. Um what is the reason you sell to Europe instead of America? And how do Europe consumers different um how are they different uh, between American customers? Yes. Like in terms of their buying habits and this kind of stuff. Like, did yeah. you sell to America? Yeah, we did a mm -hmm. long time ago, but now like for three, four years, we don't do it. All right. So the reason why is because, um, let me, let me give like a very nice analogy, right? Because this is like, we just run it up like the, uh, all the stores in the beginning because we didn't know anything else. Mm -hmm. Like this was the way our friends were doing it and we did it, we made money. But then I realized and clicked for me when I understood this analogy why it works so good. Let's say, for example, a person like you lived in Germany. So let's say, for example, you see somebody selling like, for example, you know, like this pen, yeah. right? And you see like this amazing pen and there's uh, the same pen is like in Germany and the same one as well, like with like English store. And you are just on Facebook. And if you see, if you know, like, like those two sites, you were like German yourself and the English shop is like a dot com, mm -hmm. everything in English and they offer, or the owner of like credit card. Yeah. You, you would to, rather buy the German one. You go right. to the German one. It's like all, it's like more familiar mm -hmm. and it's like in, in like in the same language. They have Klarna people, whatever. And not only that, it's also the matter of fact that the most people on Facebook that are like the best kind of like target group are like the, like, uh, like, like 35 and then, uh, like, like, uh, how do you say, like, uh, like, like 40 plus women. Mm -hmm. And they are like the biggest like currents on internet, yeah, but yeah. they buy a lot. They buy a lot. And this is why, especially and they in Germany, and, and they right. trust it more because they are so bad with the internet. If they see the native store, they trust it more. Mm -hmm. And this is why this whole model works amazing. All right. That's a nice explanation. All right. Let's get over to the next question. You made over $12 million or euros, Euro, yeah. with dropshipping, saturating products. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, how do you find those products and when do you choose to sell a product? Yeah, so I'm going to give away as well like some product research ways mm -hmm. that we do it. And by the way, one of the best spiders out there that we use is Afterlip. Afterlip you know? is really lit. I yeah. use it too. I, my team is using it too. So Afterlip is the number one. Yeah, man. Big shout out to Sadiq for it. Very amazing tool. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we use Afterlip. And what we do like usually, like we don't do so much AliExpress research to be honest. So we use Afterlip and what we do is we look mostly in the big five. And then what we do is we look at the last seven days 
uh, we pick as the platform only Shopify and we go for like the big five and we take all of the big competitors, we put them mm -hmm. in a list. And this takes hours of product research, but once you have like 20, 30, 40, 50 competitors, you can just follow them all, what, what kind of products they're importing, what they're selling. And our sweet spot to find the winning products are most of the products that we're selling for three or four days, good, mm -hmm. for at least four or five pieces a day. Because why? That is the exact moment where the most professionals who do e-com dropshipping mm -hmm. are just going to start. So before they scale. So that is like a key point mm -hmm. between somebody's like testing to scaling. So now you find you found a product that is actually, it's not scaled yet. It's proven to work mm -hmm. in the US. So there's a big chance it's always also going to work in EU. So this is how we go with the products. And mostly, obviously, yes, we do the fashion. We sell lots of fashion. Like 70% of our revenues are from fashion. And actually, right now, it's like 50-50. Like we sell as well, like gadgets and uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that kind of stuff, like for cars, home decor niche, mm -hmm. also very nice. So, Normal gallery stores. So, right. so um, it's the same strategy for the product research for fashion and for normal products too. Exactly. Right. And we, of course, also look at competitors from the EU, but we never take like products mm -hmm. um, from the same country. So if we have a Dutch store, we don't look at Dutch competitors. Okay. Just look at other countries. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Nice. Um, to which specific audience do you believe is the best to sell in Europe? And do you have any tips on effectively target this audience? For example, like, like you said, Karen's um, 30 years old, like you have something else? Yeah. So first of all, what I really think is what I, that's like exactly it. So what I think is like the woman 35 and 40 plus are like the biggest buyers I see on Facebook. If you break it down in whatever like niche you're selling, you will always see that that's the one like Facebook spends the most money on. Um, TikTok, I believe I can't say about TikTok. I didn't, mm -hmm. I did some revenue with TikTok, but nothing like compared to you, obviously, but on Facebook, like that's what we're seeing. So I would say 35 and 40 plus woman. But still, like, try to push for everything. And, you know, if you just do, like, no interest target thing mm -hmm. and only, you know, it, it's still the best on you Facebook. You're the chat, bro. <laughs> it will just go, uh, it will just spend. And All right. just have a good product, it will go good. What do you think about TikTok ads and, um, like, Google ads? Do we do, is it, like, a percentage? you do 80% Facebook, 20% TikTok? Or, like, um, yeah. you do just only Facebook, test the TikTok sometimes for fashion and stuff? Or how is it, like? Yeah, so obviously we are more into Facebook than TikTok, mm -hmm. but TikTok is very good, especially as well for beginners. Um, it's like in terms of, we see actually more bands right now on TikTok, but t t TikTok is very nice, especially to scale your winners. I made as well some videos on my YouTube channel about TikTok, that's mm -hmm. why it's amazing, especially in the German market, it's still so good. Mm -hmm. For us, the best markets have always been Germany and Netherlands. And for you? Bro, actually for me, Germany and Netherlands too. Germany yeah. and Netherlands are like the best buying powers. Um, I like the just same persons, like in the buying habits and these kind of stuff. Normal, you can scale higher in Germany because we have like 85 million people. Mm -hmm. You have only like um, 19 or 20. But yeah, Germany is, but Germany is even better than Netherlands for me, for my stores. Germany is even better than Netherlands. But yeah, um, Germany, Netherlands is the number best. one countries. And then we have like Sweden for Facebook. It's like the rose is lit, but you can't just scale it that high for a long term because like the audience is too low mm -hmm. but still the profitability is yeah. lit 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 tiktok is good yeah, yeah. man one percent it's next to facebook in my opinion the best platform one mm -hmm. percent and google is as well very good one we are right now actually working on some stores to launch like uh, google as well more on it only google like? only google yeah it's All very right. popping i see okay. people scaling with it so we are now working with uh like uh how do you say like one of our partners and we're mm -hmm. gonna run up some stores for q4 in there and see what happens is the partner from the netherlands no no it's not the dutch guy it's uh, somebody else actually i signed nda so i can't say who this oh <laughs> all right all right because i know Sadly. luca ecom is doing some really good stuff yes, yes. i know it's with jesper he's yeah, also with very jesper. good nice nice so mm -hmm. they're doing legit numbers okay nice mm -hmm. but what kind of products um are the best to sell on Google, for example? Do you know something? We've, yeah. So we've seen that it's, it's mostly just like the regular fashion products and mm -hmm. what we... They work good on Google? Yeah, fashion. Okay. Just upload all kinds of fashion, orthopedic sandals, orthopedic shoes, mm -hmm. sneakers. The legends. Of course, it depends on the season, obviously, but that's just like, it's a little bit the same as Facebook, actually. Okay. So we talked much about dropshipping, but what do you think about branding? Like, meaning buying stock, branded products, um, yeah. fast delivery, do you ever think about something like that? Like branding something? Um, and what do you think about the pros and the cons of branding and dropshipping? 
So if you're a beginner, I would definitely say don't start with branding. No, don't start with branding. That's yeah. that's true. You so, first need to like build. Yeah. The barrier to entry is too high, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Uh, you can do it, but it's gonna take a very long time before you like really like figure mm -hmm. it out. So I would definitely say as a beginner, start drop shipping. Once you made some money. What do you think is the perfect amount? Bro, I would not start with branding until I'd have like 200 Gs or mm -hmm. something, something like that. But before that, I wouldn't even get into branding. That, but that's my opinion. Everybody has different opinion. Um, and for branding, um, uh, I actually had a brand uh, six months ago, but I quit with it. And I'm going to tell you as well why. I was doing uh, selling knee braces again. I know it. I know. You posted it on Twitter. Yeah. All it, right. It was like advertorials, sales pages. Yes. And, and you know, like at Funnelish in the US. Yeah, no, no, it was like funnelish, like a competitor. It was right. also really good. And we did like five to six K a day with this. And I was gone now. We had some inventory and stuff, but I quit with it because it was so fucking boring, bro. Mm -hmm. I had like, you know, like when you start a new business, sometimes you're like, all right, let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. Oh, wait, the conversion rate is like 1.8%. I want to make it 2.3%. Mm -hmm. How can we do this? I didn't have this mindset. And I was like, if I'm going to be like this, I'm not going to step into this business. I'm not going to be 100%. I'm going to be wasting my time. So what did I do? I closed it. Um, like, like the store is still up, but we're like, we don't run anything anymore. And mm -hmm. I decided to focus on, uh, on something else, um, which is right now like more my personal brand. So we are still running the general stores, mm -hmm. while I'm as well like focusing on YouTube and my personal brand. Right. So and that's you... where I enjoyed way more, to be All honest. Right. So you enjoy just uh, teaching people the business dropshipping. Exactly. Kind of exactly. All right, that's nice. But did you have a stock um, for your brand or um, not so much? Was it in China or in the uh, Netherlands? It was in China. It was okay. in China. So it was we, still we, Chinese branded dropshipping. Exactly. It was nothing crazy, bro. To be honest, okay. nothing like, crazy. Nothing, but... No. And this is why sometimes when people come up to me and they ask something about branding, I I just always genuinely say like, bro, I never did numbers mm -hmm. with branding, and I don't mm -hmm. even consider this like mm -hmm. I did maybe like 100k or something with the store. I don't mm -hmm. even consider that something serious. So I never talk really about it. I just All say, right. bro, you know, like uh, about like branding, keep it open for the experts. All right. But in these months that you do the brand, did you see any like changes between dropshipping and branding, like the pros and cons, for example, like happy customers or yeah, like um, customers, um, these kind of things? Because yeah. a brand is like more long term. You want to keep the customer fully happy. Mm -hmm. So what did, what did you see like the changes? Yeah, so definitely what I saw was like less bands. Everything was so much more chill. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm so used to fighting the whole day with my business and <laughs> in life in general that when it's like too chill, I'm like... Something, something is wrong. Something will happen, bro. Something, something, wrong, something yeah, will happen. Exactly. Bro. That's what I really think, bro. So maybe that's the reason, you know, because I'm just... You know, when I wake up, I'm just like in a fight mode, even yeah. though I don't like, you know what I mean? Like we just, we, I, you have like this fight mode, but you go into the, and then like you go to the laptop and you go work. You yeah. know, I had this tweet the other day, I don't know if you read it. I also talked about it. So, you know, but I don't know, maybe one day I will start again. And I told you before, like we had dinner and we discussed, um, we have some interesting products and maybe we were thinking to make a, like kind of like a drop ship. Yeah. Dropship brand. Something out of it, you know, but no, I don't know. We'll see, bro. You know, the uh, dropshippers always say like, um, yeah, this Q4 is the last time and then I'm going to like go into a brand. Bro, I, say this goes into bro, I, see, I say this too since two years, brother. But uh, yeah, actually, I started my new brand right now for a few months ago. I like it's the same. Mm -hmm. I have some happy customers. I don't see many problems right now, but yeah, bro, sometimes uh, I think the problems will come anywhere. But yeah. no, no, it's um, doing good, alhamdulillah. But I'm still running a brand and uh, my dropshipping stores, my dropshipping fashion jewelry mm -hmm. stores, and again, we saw with the, just like some products. Mm -hmm. So it's just like the same, focusing on my personal brand too. But um, I think not as much as you do right now. Um, all right. What are your plans for the future with your dropshipping stores? Um, and do you have a plan to exit them? Like, do you plan to exit your dropshipping stores or like um, something? Yeah, so this is actually quite interesting because I got connected by one of my friends to some broker, mm -hmm. to a broker actually, and he's able to sell you dropshipping stores. So I never sold a store. I never did like that kind of exit or anything. Like never. But no, I never did it. But maybe I could. I could do it. I'm. I, I'm still. I'm still gonna have to get on a call with this guy and see what are like the um the requirements in order like to sell it because we have a lot of stores we did some good revenue which we can sell probably for a good amount mm -hmm. we gotta figure this first out and i'll see maybe 
with bro with drop shipping like this is the number one thing why like branding is so amazing is because you can do an exit i always mm -hmm. say like revenue is vanity profit is empty and exit is jackpot yeah exit is jackpot yeah so and you know and, and like as well like with sauce and shit you know so yeah it, it can be nice but it's just a little bit different with drop shipping <laughs> yeah for sure for drop shipping you don't even have like the big big markup yeah. As, let's say for a brand you have like a one x markup i think of the revenue or you know, of the profit i think mm -hmm. of drop shipping you have even 0.3 or something mm -hmm. and of the sauce you have like 10x like i know um sauce you can sell like for 10 times higher but um i know since 2021 i sold my first um, dropshipping store really yeah man it had Tell like about it. 450k revenue yeah it was a hula hoop store in germany um it even was in the news like in the tv news Damn. and i just got 25k for it but um it was a dropshipping store yeah. i had like many customers like oh this product came and destroyed 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 a uh, bad uh, reviews this kind of stuff i say I, I will sell the store immediately Damn. i sold it just for 25k but i was making like two three k profits a day and it was a dumb decision because i was in the at the beginning stage yeah if i would be now with this brand or with this uh, dropshipping store i would just make it the brand get some um just refund the customers or something or just um, give them a, another product or something just to make them happy but now i didn't have the mindset last time uh, 2021 i had the mindset like i make money and fuck the customer yeah i don't want the customer to be happy i need to be happy with the money that was the mindset but um, with this mindset you will not come um long but bro like did you as well give the payment processing and all that kind of stuff as well like to the no no nah, no only the store no 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 you can't give your shopify payments or clown at that time i used uh, shopify payments Damn, yeah, so you just I gave the store and that's yes 25 i just um wow. sold the store with shopify how is it called bro the old shopify um market change marketplace or yeah. it called? it's closed now it's closed why it's closed i don't know shopify marketplace is closed so but yes that was the story of my first um Damn, it's grocery crazy. store which i really sold bro that's good bro you did exit but yeah bro put it on the cv bro it's yeah nice. but <laughs> all right bro um so your focus is only on your personal brand right now mostly right now personal brand besides the stores obviously means like two times uh, how long do you want to post on youtube like how often in a week yeah so what i really realized is and i'm gonna tell you like i forgot to say this why i had this uh urge why i like directly clicked and i stopped the brand and i went to personal brand is when so it was ramadan and i was uh, uh i had no coffee i um i you know like for example i had like no coffee you could yeah. eat and stuff so no cigarettes <laughs> so what happened is that like i my focus was shit. i was working like shit. It was nice i was fasting but i was like my work was going really bad everything was still up and running but i was working really bad and then i was like why is this the case and i had like no energy and then i had like some old students you know which i was sometimes helping mm -hmm. and then i had like two calls back to back just before iftar and both of these guys they went from like they joined to like the program that i had and then they scaled their business both of them and then i was like wow i got so much energy because i, I felt so energetic mm -hmm. and this is when i knew all right impacting people is maybe something more for me um so you know everybody just has to do their own thing what they like really like to do but so that's your was, passion it's a that's passion. one of the things i saw like yeah you know why not take it more serious so the youtube part i really like about it to be honest because you just put out some nice content your mm -hmm. thoughts like you have in your yeah. mind you put it online and people actually you know like you know like love it you know so i all i even like for me the the person i one of the person i look up to uh, i look up to the most is patrick by david i think you know him as well patrick by david i don't know but if i see his face for sure yeah so that guy as well like if i go to the gym for example i hop on a treadmill i just put like like a podcast of him mm -hmm. and i listen to him so it's like yeah it's like uh, and, and i think people as well at some point they will also do it like with your always oh, saying true content and uh, yeah why not it's fun to do man you all can right impact, like for the good it's nice the the most thing i like about you is you don't change yourself before or after the camera you don't just um you're just the same person you know yeah you're not uh, another person you know but that's a very nice thing yeah last question mm -hmm. can you share just a case study of one of your students best month and um, your best month in dropshipping so i think one of the best months that we had uh, i'd say was 2021 in which we had back-to-back -back a seven-figure month mm -hmm. and that's q4 happened, yeah q4 yeah. q4 and q1 wasn't the december and january 
so we did 1.3 million and then 1.1 million back to back and the way that it happened is we just exactly had the right setup of all the stores when we were running the stores for months and then at some point like everything clicks it gets optimized and we were just running up 10 to like 15 to 20 products a day testing i think in five or six countries and then it was the german market which i was doing the highest mm -hmm. numbers and i scaled up to like 63k in one day in one market and i did this like with bit caps so i can also go bit caps to... yeah, yeah, yeah i will explain because there's many methods and i just explained this method actually which i was using two years ago to one of my friends who's running a store in the us a brand he's doing 40k a day right now so ooh, that means it's still working the strategy yeah and he used it today and uh, he sent me some maybe i can show later he, he sent me some some screenshots that he's like he put so i'm gonna explain essentially what you do is you make a bit cap right mm -hmm. abo and you can only do this at the point where you have like a winner and this winner is like running for five six days good you tested 500 euro 1k like so you spend, know whatever. it's working proven yeah. Gold nugget. yeah like it's working good and then what you do is you make an abo only one ad set which is no interest targeting and you put your best creatives ideally you you even want to duplicate your best creatives two or three times mm -hmm. um and then the next thing what you do is you're gonna doesn't matter what your like uh, like cost per purchase or whatever is you're gonna have to put your bid cap on 40 the budget on 1k euro and the the bid cap on 40. Okay. yeah and then the next day when you wake up at 9 a.m when you see you're hitting a three four row s and you spend two three hundred euros it's working good or you know like let's talk for example like a profit margin instead of like in, in row s because like everybody has a mm -hmm. different breaking row s let's say you have like 25 percent or 30 percent profit margin in the morning 9 a.m what you're going to do is you're going to duplicate that campaign that ad set four or five times instead of doing vertical scaling you're going to duplicate the ad set four or five times Horizontal. so then you have four or five campaigns all running at the same row as maybe one or two will go a little bit less but it's going to run like very consistently oh, right. but do you keep it for the next day for example yeah. you wake up and you do this for the next day for the next morning you just keep it running if okay. you see that those five campaigns all still have 20 or 30 percent profit even if you hit 10 percent or 15 percent profit bro you do so high volume you put some good upsells even marketing yeah, man. You, you have to make it work. It. and what you do is you are like this is the method in which you can just destruct the whole market mm. instead of six competitors all doing 10 a day you take over all of them because you're spending 30 to 40 euros and you're giving the highest bid yeah you're just outscaling everybody bro you know so this method is like the I'd say like the golden method mm -hmm. that worked for me and it still works for my friends. It still works for you. Um, all yeah, right. Sometimes we still do it, but it doesn't work that good anymore as it used to do, but it still works uh, sometimes, especially in the big markets. So don't do this like in uh, Finland or like these small markets, yeah, yeah, sure. but do it like in Germany and Netherlands, you can do it in like mm -hmm. France, for example. All right. Well, this, this was a nice ending of the podcast. Like everybody who sees this. Bro, if you not, just take a fucking notebook and write this down, you're a fucking dumbass. I swear. Bro, Ecom Legend Farouk, I thank you very much Anytime for this value in this podcast. Brother.